Dumb Husky and His White Cat Shi Zun. Chapter 205 Shi Zun, a great disaster is about to befall. A few people walked over to investigate and dragged the corpse out of the bushes. It was a charred corpse. The burns were too obvious. One could tell that it had struggled in the sea of fire before its death. Its face was completely viscous and no facial features could be seen. They could only tell that it was a woman from its body shape and the snow white clothes that didn't melt in the fire. Chu Wanning put his hand in the air and closed his eyes. He said, there are no traces of the Zhenlong chess piece on this one. Someone murmured, that's strange. Su Suanglin made an entire mountain of Zhenlong chess pieces. Could it be that he left this one out? Someone immediately retorted, have you ever seen a corpse left alone on the mountain top? Mo Ran also walked over and looked at the female corpse carefully. As the person who was the most skilled at Zhenlong chess pieces in his previous life, he obviously knew about the restrictions of this spell. Therefore, he had a fairly solid guess about the identity of this female corpse, but he needed some evidence. He soon found the evidence he was looking for. Mo Ran took a chain from her hand and wiped away the ash on it, revealing some light red spiritual stones. He handed the chain to Zhang Shi and said, It's Song Kaiyutong. How did you? Zhang Shi was halfway through his question when he looked at the chain and realized, You recognize this chain. I gave it to her as a wedding gift. Mo Ran said concisely, Song Kaiyutong is the descendant of Xin Yi. He was the butterfly boned beauty who subdued the vermilion bird evil spirit. Song Kaiyutong was used as the key to opening the forbidden area of Mount Huang. Someone asked, Did Su Xuanglin kill Song Kaiyutong and use her as a key to open the gate of Mount Huang? Mo Ran shook his head and stared at Song Kaiyutong's face for a long time. He didn't feel pity for her but his feelings were indeed complicated. Mo Ran said, No, I'm afraid that when he brought her up the mountain, she was still alive. Why do you say that? This time, before Mo Ran could speak, Zhang Shi spoke first. Zhang Shi did not intend to let the younger generation be in the center stage again. Perhaps it was because he wanted to save his face. Thus he instead spoke calmly, to give Mount Huang an order. Mo Ran glanced at him and thought that this was for the best. If he said everything himself, it would be harder for him to defend himself if he was suspected in the future. Therefore, he walked to the side and gave the podium to Zhang Shi so he may continue to speak. Someone asked, Give order? Song Kaiyutong is a weak woman, what kind of orders can she give? She may be weak, but her ancestors may not be all weaklings. The vermilion bird's evil spirit guarding Mount Huang will only obey the order of the bloodline that subdued it. Zhang Shi was not a foolish person and said, Song Kaiyutong was the last descendant of this bloodline. That person sucked in a breath of cold air. Ah, the one who subdued the evil phoenix spirit was the butterfly bone beauty Xin Yi. Not bad. That's unheard of. Zhang Shi said, it's normal that you haven't heard of it. The four great evil mountains have no other purpose other than guarding. Therefore, no one cares too much about whether they can be opened or who opens them. Song Kaiyutong lost her home and was auctioned. She probably didn't know that she could hide on Mount Huang. She probably hasn't heard of her ancestor subduing the evil phoenix spirit. So, so it was Su Xuanglin who brought her here. That should be the case. Zhang Shi continued, at that time when the tribulation fire in the Rufeng sect broke out, everyone fled. No one would return to the main hall to care about that weak woman. The only one who could care about her was Su Xuanglin or Su Xuanglin's mysterious accomplice. Xue Zhenyang pondered on the side and nodded. Since the person behind the scenes can tear open a space rift and take Su Xuanglin to another place, it should be easy for him to take Song Kaiyutong. Why don't we think about it he takes her to Mount Huang. Song Kaiyutong is a person who tries to curry favor with those in power. She will only obey if she grasps this life-saving straw. At this time, that person only needs to take her to Mount Huang and let her give orders to Mount Huang. She won't refuse him. 
Someone asked, but why doesn't he use a Zhenlong chess piece to control Song Kaiyutong? Because the evil phoenix spirit can distinguish whether the person giving orders is being controlled or not, Zhang Shi said, the person must be alive and willing. Only then will this mountain listen to its orders. Everyone slowly realized what was going on. Someone said in astonishment, then what are we doing here? Didn't we fall for his trick and run to his backstage? Because of this damn mantle of Mount Huang, we can't get rid of these soul-devouring insects. What should we do now? Zhang Shi frowned. He seemed to dislike Mo Ran's analogy of front stage and backstage. However, he still said, find the front stage and directly destroy Su Xuanglin's puppets. Grandmaster Mo. After Zhang Shi finished speaking, he suddenly called out to Mo Ran. Mo Ran was originally listening attentively with his arms crossed. When he heard the man called out to himself, he couldn't help but be startled. Hmm. What's wrong? Zhang Shi said faintly, Grandmaster Mo's analysis just now was very clear and logical. Then, I would like to ask Grandmaster Mo one more question. Where is the front stage and how do we find it? Mo ran. Try with Jiangui. Try, what? Mo ran coughed softly. A flame lit up in his palm and a willow vine suddenly sprang out. He said, we can use this. It's called Jiangui. Jiangxi. Just like Tianwen, Jiangui has the ability to coax the truth. They both had the ability to interrogate living people, evil spirits, and corpses whose souls had left their bodies. The difference was that interrogating people and corpses required them to speak. Interrogating ghosts, on the other hand, required them to communicate directly with their souls. Song Kaiyutong had been dead for more than a month. Her soul was long gone. Fortunately, Mount Huang was full of yin energy and her body had not yet to decompose. Mo Ran said in a low voice, Jai Angui, go and interrogate her. Jai Angui immediately obeyed the order. It stretched out its branches and wrapped around Song Kaiyutong's body three times. Her body began to emit a dazzling red light. The red light flowed in Mo Ran's eyes. He opened his mouth and asked in a low voice, Is the person who brought you here Su Xuanglin? Song Kaiyutong's charred face was hard to distinguish. For a moment, there was no movement. Is it not working? Someone muttered softly. Mo Ran narrowed his eyes and asked again, Is the person who brought you here Su Xuanglin? Still, there was no movement. Zhang Shi said, It seems that Grandmaster Mo is still too young. Why don't you let your Shi's undo it? However, at this moment, Song Kaiyutong's neck suddenly moved. Her movements were stiff and extremely slow. However, there was no doubt that she was shaking her head very obviously. Xue Zhenyang said in shock, it's not Su Xuanglin. Mo Ran gripped Jiangui tightly. The veins on the back of his hand bulged slightly. He asked again, then, have you seen the person who brought you here clearly? After a few moments of silence, Song Kaiyutong suddenly opened her mouth. However, she did not answer. Instead, what came out of her mouth was a large slimy snake. It fell to the ground and slithered away with a hiss. Some of the Gai Yuye's disciples immediately recognized it. She has a swallowing snake in her stomach. The swallowing snake was a demonic beast. It was not poisonous and was covered in spirit armor. It could survive in a human stomach for more than 20 years. This kind of demonic snake was also used by many sects in the upper cultivation world like the Shadow Guards of the Rufeng sect for example. All the Shadow Guards once chosen was made to swallow the snake. From then on, the Shadow Guard could only answer the truth to the owner of the swallowing snake. No matter what others asked them, they could only answer lies or half-truths. Otherwise, this snake would wake up from its hibernation and instantly tear apart the host's internal organs, throat, and tongue. The red light of the Jiangui was suddenly extinguished. Song Kaiyutong's entire body was trembling. She kept shaking her head. A large lump of scarlet blood flowed out of her mouth. 
it looked like her internal organs had been torn apart as well as her tongue and throat. She could not tell the truth anymore. Everyone was shocked. Suddenly, someone suggested, since she can't talk, why don't we let her write? The moment Mo Ran saw the swallowing snake, he already knew that whoever did this was very meticulous. It was already beyond the reach of ordinary people. However, he still stepped forward and lifted Song Kaiyutong's hands to take a closer look. Shui Zhenyang asked, How is it? Mo Ran shook his head. The muscles and bones of her arms have all been cut off. She can't write anything at all. The surroundings were getting more and more ominous. Suddenly, a chilly wind blew past. The leaves laughed sinisterly within the mountain forest. The howls of the fierce corpses could be heard from both near and far. For a moment, the atmosphere on the mountain peak was chilly to the extreme. Ma Yun, the lord of Dobeo Villa, broke this deathly silence and said, Then, are all the clues gone? No one said anything. Mo Ran withdrew Jiangui and Song Kaiyutong's body had already softly fallen to the ground. Soon, the vines of Mount Huan crept over and carefully coiled around their master's body. They wrapped her up and dragged her into the bushes, as if they wanted to use this small bush to preserve her. He actually didn't understand why Su Suanglin and the others didn't directly kill Song Kaiyutong and burn her to the ground. Instead, they went through so much trouble to cut off the meridians in her hands and feed them to the swallowing snake. However, when he saw this scene, he suddenly understood. Mount Huang obeyed the butterfly bone beauty Song clan from birth to death. As long as her body was in Mount Huang, the phoenix's evil spirit would not allow anyone to burn its master to ashes. Mo Ran didn't know how to feel for a moment. He suddenly thought of himself in his previous life. When he died, no one would collect his body. Before he breathed his last, he had to lie in a pre-dug coffin which was probably meaningless. It would be strange if the rebel army that attacked the mountain didn't dismember his body upon discovering it. In his previous life, he probably died in an even more miserable way than Song Kaiyutong. At the end of his life, there wasn't even a single vine that was willing to protect him. Many people around were muttering and talking to each other. They frowned and discussed what to do next. Some people closed their eyes and pondered, such as Zhang Shi and Chu Wanning. Mo Ran also closed his eyes and sorted out everything that was happening in front of him. Such a bloody method was very similar to his previous life. Perhaps because of this, Mo Ran felt that it wasn't that difficult to guess what Su Xuanglin was thinking and doing. He seemed to see Su Xuanglin in his sans hung courtyard, walking back and forth barefoot. Su Xuanglin was thinking, asking himself, what should I do if I don't have enough spiritual power to control a group of cultivator corpses? Then he thought of an idea. Use the shared heart array, kill the same number of ordinary people. One cultivator's corpse corresponded to an ordinary corpse, like a marionette, for him to control. Where was the safest place to do this? The four great evil mountains. What should I do if I can't open the barrier of Mount Huang? Yu Song Kaiyutong. Mo Ran's eyes darkened as he pondered over the little clues that had to be connected to each other. Where would the corpses of the ordinary people come from? The tribulation fire which would burn Lin Yi to the ground. Although they were all guesses, they all matched up. The light in his eyes gathered and dispersed. He could even feel that he was Su Xuanglin and Su Xuanglin was him. Standing at the top of Mount Huang, his eyes were almost crazy as he looked at the surging corpse tied at the foot of the mountain. It became clearer and clearer until suddenly, he was stuck at a point. If he was Su Xuanglin and after doing all this, how should he set up the front stage and perform the puppet show that he had painstakingly arranged? Where should he choose the front stage? Where could he find the corpses of powerful and considerable cultivators? A place where should he was discovered, he would be protected. The gradually flourishing light in the sky suddenly dimmed. Mount Xiao. He muttered. Zhang Shi looked at him sideways. What? Mo Ran's expression changed. 
he looked to the east and suddenly became a little angry. Mount Chiao. The Hero's Tomb. The stage he chose is at Chiao Mountain's Hero's Tomb. In the calamity at Linyi, most of the victims were ordinary people. Su Suanglin could get so many corpses of ordinary people, but where could he get the corpses of powerful cultivators? Hero's Tomb. Zhang Shi also reacted. You're saying that Su Xuanglin could summon the corpses of the Rufeng sect buried in Hero's tomb in the past several hundred years. Mo Ran didn't feel like talking nonsense with him. He cursed inwardly and rushed down the mountain. Su Xuanglin was really a madman. Generations of Rufeng sect sect leaders and grand masters were buried in Hero's tomb. Even the first sect leader who became immortal. Using the shared heart array to control ordinary cultivators was fine, but to control these people? Once Su Suanglin's spiritual power could no longer support the forbidden technique, he would suffer the backlash of qi deviation and would die instantly. Then these powerful fierce corpses of the Rufeng sect members in the past several hundred years would go berserk and out of control. That would be a great calamity no less terrible than the infinite hell's heavenly rift. End chapter Dumb Husky and His White Cat Shizun Chapter 206 Shizun, just who am I? Mo Ran swept past the rolling tide of corpses and went straight to the foot of the mountain. After exiting the barrier, his eyes immediately fell on Nangong Si. At this time, Nangong Si seemed to have been released from the imprisonment technique he imposed on himself. Ye Wang Zi was kneeling on one knee, bandaging his wounds. Mei Hangxiu, on the other hand, sat quietly between Zhang Dong Hall Group and Nangong Si. In front of him was his Kong Hao. His fingertips lightly moved and the sound of flowing water could be heard. It must be known that Mei Hangxiu was the Dashikshan of Kunlun's Taxiu Palace. Moreover, it was said that this person appeared and disappeared mysteriously. His movements were extremely strange and unpredictable. At this moment though, he couldn't be more serious and menacing. Thanks to him that although the group of people from Dongtang Hall wished they could cut Nangong Si into pieces, they couldn't do so. They could only obediently sit on a rock nearby and glare at them. Seeing Mo Ran come down, Mei Hangxiu stopped playing his Kong Hao. He put the instrument away, stood up, and nodded slightly at him all the while looking extremely dignified and proper. How is it on the mountain? Mo Ran said, we had been misled. Misled. Mei Hangxiu slightly frowned. When the people of Zhang Dong Hall heard this, they also gathered around. Huang Xiaoyu was still lying in the pavilion nearby, letting a few disciples massage his legs and shoulders. He made a weak appearance but when he heard this, he could not help but squint his eyes and perk up his ears to listen. Mo Ran said, Su Xuanglin is not on this mountain. I'm afraid he is on Mount Xiao. I. Before he finished speaking, Nangong Si's face had already turned pale. He suddenly stared at Mo Ran, Su Xuanglin is on Mount Xiao. Most probably but I'm not completely sure. Nangong Si was stunned for a moment and muttered. Impossible, Mount Xiao only listens to the orders of the Nangong clan. Su Xuanglin, he. He thought of something and was suddenly at a loss for words. Then, the last bit of blood drained from his face. His pair of bright black eyes stared at Mo Ran's face. For a moment, he had forgotten that Su Xuanglin's real surname was also Nangong. The Nangong family had once had a pair of young heroes who were highly praised, one willow and one catkin. Everyone used to think that under the care of this pair of brothers, Rufeng sect would rise in unprecedented glory. Who would have thought that the two brothers and the Rufeng sect would end up in such a situation? Nangong Si silently lowered his eyelids, no longer knowing what to say. At this time, the others also came down from Mount Huang one after another. The few thousand people were like a school of migrating fish, squeezing their way back to the front of the mountain. Chu Wanning walked over with Shui Meng and Shi Mei following behind him. He looked at Nangong Si and asked, How did your hand get hurt? It's not a big deal. I cut it myself, Nangong Si said, Thank you for your concern, 
Grandmaster. Xuemeng sighed and said, Call him Shizun, not Grandmaster. Really, Shizun gave you face, yet you don't want it? You. I've never followed the Grandmaster before, Nangong C's dry and peeling lips slightly opened and closed, everything I've learned has never been taught by the Grandmaster. Grandmaster doesn't need to take my mother's request to heart. Chu Wanning was speechless. I'm sorry. But I don't remember the three kowtow ceremony that year. Before Chu Wanning could say anything, he saw Zhang Shi and several other sect leaders walking over, followed by seven or eight people. He wasn't used to speaking of personal matters in front of so many people, so he pursed his lips and didn't say anything else. He only handed over a small bottle of medicine from his kinkin bag. Apply it externally every day and you'll recover in three days. By the time he finished speaking, the other people had already arrived. Huang Xiaoyu was also supported by others as he walked over shakily from the pavilion. Zhang Donghall definitely wouldn't miss out on this cup of soup. Now that Zhang Shi was the leader of all the major sect, it was only right for him to speak first. But Zhang Shi looked at Nangong Si. For a moment, he wasn't sure what kind of attitude was most suitable for the situation. The Rufeng sect had been domineering and tyrannical for so many years and they had accumulated a lot of enmities with other sects and clans who had now nowhere to vent their anger and hatred on. In the end, it all fell on the Nangong family alone. But what did Nangong see do wrong? He wasn't the one who took and kept the water-cutting sword scroll from Beaten Manor, nor was he the one who was asking for such an exorbitant price to get them back. He didn't even have the chance to find out where the sword manual was. His father Nangong Lu had committed many crimes and his death was a good thing. Nowadays, everyone said that the son should pay for the father's debts, but if the son paid for the father's debts, how many people present should be subjected to the same rule as well? Moreover, this young man was the only descendant of the Nangong family, the key to opening the door to Mount Xiao. You. Zhang Shi opened his mouth hesitantly. He had just said you when suddenly someone next to him said in a trembling voice, Benefactor Nangong, you have to come with us. As the saying goes, the one who started the trouble should be the one to resolve it. You must not ignore the mess left behind by the Rufeng sect and simply watch things with folded arms. Zhang Shi saw that it was the abbot of Wuabei Temple, Master Xianjing. He couldn't help but sneer in his heart. He thought that this old bald donkey was not above reproach and wanted to pick a fight. However, this was fine. He wasn't good at social talks anyway, so he lazily shut his mouth and stood at the side. He watched Master Xianjing hold his staff and preach to Nangong Si with Umitba. Nangong Si listened for a while and said, Sure, I'll go with you to Mount Xiao. Master Xianjing didn't expect that he would agree to help open the barrier of Mount Xiao so quickly. He was stunned for a while and then he put his palms together and said, Umitba, benefactor is sensible and the gods and Buddhas are aware so your sins will surely be reduced. For a moment, Nangong Si seemed to want to say something but stopped himself. Nao Bajin whimpered in his quiver and wanted to climb out, but was pressed back in by his master without batting an eyelid. With utmost restraint, Nangong Si replied, I'm going to Mount Jiao because I don't want the sleeping heroes of the Rufeng sects to become reluctant accomplices in helping evildoers. However, I thank the master for your kind intentions in guiding me on the way. In this way, they obtain the key to open Mount Xiao. However, each of the four great evil mountains was different from one another. If one wanted to go to Mount Xiao, no matter if it was a member of the Nangong clan or an outsider brought in by the Nangong clan, they had to do two things. First, they had to fast for ten days. Second, Upon reaching the mountain range belonging to Mount Xiao, they had to walk all the way. They couldn't ride their swords or horses. They had to cross the first three mountains on foot to show their sincerity. Xue Zhenyong calculated the time and said, from here up to the mountain range of Mount Xiao, it would take about ten days if we're riding horses. 
I suggest if everyone doesn't have any pressing matters that they had to attend to in their respective sect, then it's better if you don't go back. Rather, let us all go together as a group. The master of the Taxu Palace agreed and said, that's a good suggestion. If we go together, we can discuss matters and plan countermeasures. Shui Zhenyang said, but there are at least 3,000 people here. It's a bit difficult to find horses for this many. At this time, a weak voice suddenly came from the crowd. A hand was raised. It was a wretched man wearing a red brocade robe. The edge of the robe was embroidered with a black cat totem. I have some in my villa. It should be enough. Villa Master Ma. Zhang Shi raised his eyebrows. This person was Ma Yun, the sect leader of the Dobeo Villa, one of the nine major sects in the upper cultivation world. He was the third richest person in the book Shui Men had bought. However, now that Nangong Lu was dead, he should be the second richest person in terms of wealth. Compared to Zhang Shi, Ma Yun was more down to earth and looked more like a normal businessman. However, the way the two of them amassed wealth couldn't be more different. Zhang Shi was fierce, had a lot of connections, and had a lot of treasures. He ran the black market of the cultivation world. Meanwhile Villa Master Ma set up courier stations of various sizes in the cultivation world to accept all kinds of package delivery and renting out immortal horses, enchanted boats, and spiritual carriages. Their villa was good at making all kinds of enchanted boats and carriages. They raised a large number of strong cattle and horses. Therefore, Villa Master Ma had a nickname, Reception Horse. Facing the cold-faced Zhang Shi, the reception horse seemed to be a little scared. It shrank its neck and said, Or, we can go to Linling Isle. Sect Master Jiang's manner definitely has more steeds than mine, he he he. Everyone was speechless. Zhang Shi looked at the wrinkled smile on his face. After a moment of silence, he said, I'm just moved by Villa Master Ma's generous help. I don't mean anything else. This place is close to the Dobeo Villa. It's good that Villa Master Ma is willing to lend us his horses. When Villa Master Ma heard this, he sighed in relief and said with a smile, then may I invite everyone to go to our humble place. It's already late. Why don't you stay in the villa for the night and set off together the next day? Dobeo Villa was located at the edge of the West Lake, at the summit of Lonely Mountain. However, even though Lonely Mountain was named a mountain, it was actually just a hill. Climbing to the peak of Lonely Mountain would only take half an hour. We're here. Villa Master Ma stood in front of the huge bright red mountain gate in high spirits. He raised his hand and removed the protective barrier. Please come in, come in, come in. During the trip to Mount Huang, the sect leaders were either anxious or worried. Only Villa Master Ma was able to act as if nothing had happened. He was even able to show a warm smile. Everyone looked at each other and smiled bitterly. However, they didn't say anything. The sect leaders entered first, followed by the sect elders and then the personal disciples. Behind them were the disciples of the various sects. They entered the Dobeo Villa's barrier gate in succession. Shuemeng muttered to Mo Ran, what is this reception horse doing? He's laughing so hard that I'm getting goosebumps. He can't be in cahoots with Su Suanglin, right? Is he trying to lure us into a trap? It can't be. How can you be so sure? Mo Ran replied, the sect leaders and the elites of the major sects are all here. Furthermore, everyone is on high alert and fully armed. If he's in cahoots with Su Suanglin, he won't be able to do anything and would instead just expose himself. Then why is he so happy? Mo Ran sighed and said, he's happy because he made a fortune. What fortune? He's clearly making a loss. Shui Meng was dumbfounded. He was the same as his father. He didn't have a good business sense. It was said that when he was young, Madame Wang gave him a silver leaf and told him to buy something for himself. In the end, he exchanged the silver leaf for a small kite and three greasy copper coins. He was miserably cheated. 
However, he still thought that the kite looked good and since he was happy with what he bought, he felt that it was worth it. How could someone like him understand the thoughts of the reception horse? Thus, after thinking for a long time, he was still dumbfounded. Did you hear wrong? It's clearly mentioned that we are just going to borrow horses, not rent them. He was he supposed to earn a single cent, he. At this time, the low-level disciple in charge of receiving guests came to welcome them. Moran waved his hand, indicating that he shouldn't say anything else. The servant girl wearing pink led them with a smile to the side courtyard where they would be temporarily staying for the night. This row of side courtyards were all near the edge of the mountain. Each courtyard could accommodate six people. At dusk, Moran stood in front of the window of his room, gazing at the distant mountains and the mist of the West Lake. After coming down from Mount Huang, Moran had been very anxious and uneasy. Now that he was behind closed door, he finally revealed his restlessness. He rubbed the window frame with one hand, while the other hand was subconsciously playing with a warm object in his palm. The scenery of Jiangnan was always beautiful, but at this time, he was not in the mood to appreciate it. The setting sun was dim. If someone saw his face at this time, they would not believe that he was that righteous Grand Master Mo. This was a face that belonged to the Emperor, Taxian Jun of his previous life. Gloomy. The setting sun pierced his dark eyes. In the dusk, Mo Weiyu's face changed. The reincarnated person behind Su Xuanglin made him tremble in fear. He felt as if there was a knife against his neck, and the blade was already touching his skin, piercing his flesh with blood already seeping out. Although that person did not use force to cut him, he could not turn his head to clearly see who was standing behind him. That person could take his life at any moment. He was very confused. He felt that he could not hide the matter of his rebirth for long. If the day of the battle was the day the truth was revealed, what should he do? What would his uncle and aunt think of him? What would Shi Mei think of him? What would Shui Meng think of him? There was also Chu Wanning. Chu Wanning. If the matter of his previous life was exposed, how much would Chu Wanning despise him? Would he be unwilling to even look at him from then on? Mo Ran was very confused. The more he thought about it, the colder he felt. He felt chilled to the bone. Clatter. Suddenly, a sound was heard. The thing in his hand fell to the floor. He picked it up absent-mindedly and glanced at it. There was some dust on that little thing. It seemed that this side courtyard of Dobeo Villa had not been lived in for a long time. The people who took care of it were not diligent. There was some dust on the floor. He paused. Moran's face suddenly turned pale. He suddenly realized what his fingers was fiddling with. Lying in the palm of his hand was a dark and warm chess piece. A Zhenlong chess piece. Moran's expression changed. In his previous life, he had developed a habit in the last two years before his death. Every time he felt extremely complicated and irritated, he could not help but gather his spiritual power in his palm and condense it into a small black chess piece. He would fiddle with it within his hands. This habit of his made many attendants in the palace frightened. Moran overheard the palace servants discussing this matter. They all thought that he must be angry, that whenever he was angry, he would make a chess piece. Meaning, he wanted to kill people and turn them into puppets. I'm so scared that his majesty will throw that chess piece out at any time. To be honest, I'd rather watch him play with people's skulls. If you're that afraid, how much more am I? I'm his majesty's attendant. Heaven knows how many times my legs have softened. How much spiritual power does it take for his majesty to create a chess piece? He can't just be playing around, right? He must have a purpose for it or he wants to vent his anger. If he vents it on me, what should I do? Moran was speechless but he also found it funny. He didn't understand what these gossiping palace servants were thinking. How could they guess what he was thinking with such certainty? In reality, 
there was no reason for him to create a chess piece. It was just a hobby that Taxi and June developed over the years. The reason was that simple. But ever since he heard this discussion of the palace servants, his playful heart would sometimes be stirred. He would pretend to throw the precious chess pieces in his hand at some servant girl, scaring those servant girls to repeatedly beg for mercy while their legs were shaking like a sieve. His face would look as cold as normal but in his heart, he was secretly amused. That was the only fun he had in the last two years of his life. He had not refined a Zhenlong chess piece for a long time. Mo Ran had wanted to sever ties with his former self. Ever since his rebirth, Mo Ran had never used this technique again. In the blink of an eye, seven or eight years had passed. He thought that he would forget this cultivation method and technique. It seemed that he could not escape at all. This sin was already planted in his soul. Mo Ran stared at the black chess piece and his hands could not help but tremble. He suddenly felt hopeless. He suddenly did not know who he was. Was he the emperor, Taxi and Jun? Or was he Grand Master Mo? He suddenly did not know where he was. Was he at the West Lake? Or was he in front of the Wushan Palace? Suddenly, he could no longer distinguish between dream and reality. He was trembling, shaking uncontrollably. That tiny black stone was reflected in his eyes like a heavy nightmare, like a pitch black blood stain. There was a sinister voice in his head that kept on laughing madly and roaring at the top of its lungs. Mo Wiiu. Mo Wiiu. You can't escape. You can't escape. You can only be an evil person forever. You can only be a ghost. You are a jinx. A jinx. The voice was loud and clear. Knock, knock, knock. Suddenly, a series of knock was heard from his door. Mo Ran woke up with a start, cold sweat dripping down his back. He held the chess piece tightly in his hand, turned around and shouted, Who is it? It's me. The person outside answered, It's Shui Meng. End chapter.